I like peanut butter, I like peanut butter, peanut peanut butter, I like peanut butter, I like peanut butter, I like peanut butter, peanut peanut butter. You're listening to the Creep Geeks Podcast. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash cheap geek. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. So it begins again. Welcome back to the Creepiest Podcast, episode number 104. Flying Creatures Spotted, Bah Humbug, and Fart Equals Knife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it begins again, and welcome back to the Creep Geeks Podcast, episode number 104. Yes, it's been quite a long time, or so it seems. We've had some major changes happen. Yep. Hopefully like, all for the better. Like moving. Yes, we decided to move from pretty much... Across the country. Across the country. To an undisclosed location. That's right. We are now broadcasting from our new studio. Homemade studio at that, put together with our own hands and, and fingers. <laughs> And drills and stuff like that. So we're now broadcasting from somewhere in the mountains of Western North Carolina from our brand new Creep Geeks Bunker Studio. Yeah. So we did some acoustic sound treatments to it. We made some things to make it sound a little better, and hopefully it does. Yeah. We also found out that there is no such thing as internet here in the bunker. You have to rely on the satellites, hopefully to spit some internet at you. (laughs) Why you gotta make it gross? Because it is gross. <laughs> it's 2018, and we're in the freaking dark ages. We are one step below DSL, Actually, and ten steps above dial-up. Barely. So. I mean, have you ever seen like the Terminator movie where they're in like a bunker and they got like all the old stuff in there and they're like all ready for the future? That's five years ahead of where we're at right yeah, now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, doing the best we can with what we got and all the signs that say lightning fast, high speed satellite internet is a lie, but or we're going to work with it maybe, and work through it. Maybe we have unrealistic expectations. Yeah, because it's only 2018, about to be 2019, and they're like, hey, you should be excited about having 20 megabit download and 4 megabit upload. Yeah. It's like, Wow. My walkie-talkie is faster than that. And for anybody who has... My calculator is yeah. faster than that. Anybody who has suggestions, why don't you get Fios or why don't you get this? See, and to those people, I would like to say this. It has to exist before you can get it. <laughs> All these morons, right? Hey, why don't you just get DSL? If there was a faster option physically available at our current undisclosed location in the mountains of Western North Carolina, we would get it. And, oh, so... Hey, why don't you just get the fastest internet on the planet? Well, dude, if that was an option, would we get it? Closer to civilization, we have a relative, and I found out through your sister-in-law. They told her it would be $2,000 just to dig the lines from her house to civilization so she could get DSL. Really? Yeah. That seems like that's worth it. The f- Is the it VDSL or ADSL? V- VDSL. That's actually what we had in New Mexico. Yeah. So. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, yeah. So. Might have to look into that. But that $2,000 was just one block of digging. As okay, well, we have miles. Uh, yeah. Right. So. <laughs> So we're happy for what we got. Yeah. It's going to change how we do the show a little bit. 
And if you've been listening to the audio podcast, very much appreciated. So We do appreciate you tuning in, and you can find this podcast anywhere where you can find a podcast. As far as doing the live streaming show, we'll have to work that out. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is what it is. So if this is your very first time tuning into the Creep Geeks podcast, we've got over 102 episodes. We have 104 total. What is this podcast about? Well, this podcast is broadcasting paranormal news and fun stories from our Creep Geeks Bunker Studio in the mountains of Western North Carolina. We're an offbeat news podcast that takes a lighthearted approach to the strange, the stupid, paranormal, and tech topics circulating the web. Well, that was fantastic. Yeah. Very, very nice. And uh, you guys, you can still call the show because well, at least we can get those. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we have a number. Yes. That phone number is going to be 575 208 4025. Call and That's leave a, a nice message. Number. Say hello. Tell a creepy story if you have one. Anything. We may play you on the show. Yeah. This is some upbeat music. Actually, I want this music for like one of my time lapse videos. It's good for that. Yeah. It actually says time lapse. (laughs) Oh, really? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Okay. So one of the things that we've noticed is with podcasts, it's the same thing with YouTube videos that you really don't have an option for music because any music you use, you'll get your pants sued clean off of you. Yeah. Yeah. But we have found um, a source for music, and they have a large library of music, and we can use it for podcasts. And uh, we're going to see what it does for yeah. us. So. And since this is a legitimate podcast, we're going to use legitimate music. Yeah, we don't just... Yeah, There's a reason why you can catch this podcast on iTunes and SoundCloud. And iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio. Google Play. And Google Play. And Spotify. Spotify and all over the place, so... Yeah, so it is what it is. And if you guys could rate us on whatever platform you found us, that would be super appreciated. We'd like to grow, and every review, you know, good, bad, positive, constructive feedback helps us grow and helps us become more visible to other potential listeners and podcast subscribers. That's right. We accept only the finest quality, three to five star reviews. (laughs) We'll put the link um, to our iTunes rating page in the show notes and... For everybody else, just click on us, whatever podcast player you're using, and give us a rating. Yeah, and if you're following along on the Facebook page, because we do have the Creep Geeks podcast Facebook page, there'll be a link there for you to click on as well. Oh, okay. Okay, so um, as we sort of alluded to in the beginning of the show, we have uh, moved. Yeah. We are no longer broadcasting out of New Mexico. We are broad, which is you know its own weird, wacky place. We're broadcasting out of the weird, wacky, wild, wonderful Western North Carolina. The mountains. Yeah. 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 Don't say it like that. Okay. <laughs> because just because people speak like that around here doesn't mean that we have to do that. Okay. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Plus, it sounds weird when you do that. So, really? Yeah, it's my serious voice. Okay. Do you like that? Shh. Hello. Uh huh. Hello. <laughs> <All right. coughs> so, yeah, we decided uh, it was time to get back to the East Coast. We have family. We've been away for four years. It's, it's time to get back to family. That's what we did. Eventually. We left amazing friends yeah. in New Mexico, uh, some of which we knew um, in Virginia. They moved out that way. And, but that's okay, though, because we decided to make a huge life change. And this is kind of a recap for those people who follow along with the audio podcast who maybe not have seen our live stream. Where we made that announcement. Where we made the announcement. And the live stream is where we typically do a live stream podcast. And you can join in and chat and all that good stuff. And it was done on YouTube. And it's probably still going to be done on YouTube. And we'll figure out when that happens. And we'll put the announcements out there. So if you'd like to listen to the podcast and watch the podcast and be a part of the podcast, you can certainly do that. Yeah. Because, you know, why not? So anyway, uh, we decided to go back to the East Coast and get to the mountains in western North Carolina. And we decided to live in a bunker and build a studio. Mm-hmm. And we also decided to create content and make that our jobs. Full time. Yep. So yep. good, bad, or ugly, this is what we're doing. Yep. And yeah. we're going to be, I guess, resurrecting my YouTube channel. Resurrection. Yeah. Ooh, wait, so... I got some resurrection music. Hold on. <laughs> there you go. Asian banjos is not resurrection. Stop it. Yes, it is. 
It's nice though. So for DIY stuff, I'll start publishing content. But I'm also working on two books. Very nice. Yes. Yes. One of them's a spooky book. Ooh. Yeah. I'm scared already. <laughs> I know. I'm over here shaking. So. so. Uh, yeah. And, you know, for those of you who don't know, I have a YouTube channel. It's called the Cheap Geek YouTube channel. Or just Google Cheap Geek and you'll find it. Making lots of videos. Um, you know, we create content. It's kind of what we do. Yeah. Uh, Facebook has allowed us to create videos and upload them. YouTube gives us an option to create videos and upload them. The podcast gives us an option to upload audio content so that you can listen to and peruse at your leisure. And why not? And I'm working on my photography. Yeah. Yeah. So we are, we are in a spot where we were able to do this, and we've decided to go ahead and do it and go at it full speed. Yeah. Yes. So that's kind of what we're doing. So anyway, we uh, took some time off to move relocate, research the internet situation or lack thereof, and create a studio. Also upgraded some of our audio gear and ordered and refilled our stickers and t-shirt type stuff and swag type stuff. So we're kind of ready. Yeah. So come January 2019, a change is happening. Yeah. Because 2018 sucked. Yeah. So, and I think it was pretty crappy for a lot of people. It was. Now, if you had a great 2018, that's awesome. But if you didn't and you can relate, leave us a comment. Well, I thought about that. Like, even people that we thought would have had a great 2018, like, uh, yeah. uh, what is the guy? The guy who owns Tesla. Um, um, Elon Musk. Yes. Even everybody thought he had a great year. No, he had some pitfalls there. Oh, yeah. With his company. Yeah. So, I was like, Wow. Everybody, because that was the first person when somebody said, um, name somebody who has had a decent 2018. That was the first name that popped into my head. Yeah. And then I went and Googled it, and I'm like, oh, I was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so nobody I can think of has had a great 2018. So here's to making 2019 full of better. great content and just all around better for everybody. Yes. Yeah. So. So, and plus with that change, it begins a uh, sort of new endeavor that we're going to be doing, especially with the Creep Geeks podcast. Um, if we are close enough to go investigate and research some stuff, we're gonna. Yes. And if we have local events we can attend to, we're gonna. And we have travels to go um, attend to and, uh, you know, places to go, some conferences to attend. Like we're still doing the uh, Human Origins Conference in March. Yeah. Uh, back in New Mexico. Um, we're looking at going to Cryptid Con. And Bigfoot Fest. Oh, yeah. And Loch Ness Monster Day. I'm just making them up because I can't remember. <laughs> so. But if you um, are listening and you are aware of any uh, small events, small or large, any type, anything interesting and pertinent to the Creep Geeks podcast, send us a message about it. Send us a yeah. link. Give anything us details. Anything weird. Yeah, we want some we like of those weird. Stuff. I've been on the internet as much as I can, trying to find some nearby events. But anything North Carolina, this general area, this region, send us a message. Contact at creepgeeks.com and just put event idea or hey, I got an idea. Or hey, here's an event. Yeah. And you can also give us a call at 1 575 208. Four zero two five. Yep. It's a toll free number. You can call and leave a story or a message or an idea or an event that you think we should probably attend to. So very nice. So I like how you're looking at me, <laughs> trying to crack open that Pepsi real quiet. <laughs> like if I look at him, he won't see that I'm about to make some noise. It's an organic podcast. Yeah, <laughs> it's not an organic Pepsi, but it's an organic podcast. So. Yeah, but you can definitely give us a call, 575-208-4025, and leave us a message if you'd like to talk to us, um, that kind of thing. And pretty soon, once we get everything sort of figured out and get all the live show going and all that stuff, and you can definitely call in, and that number does work for our call-in part of the show as well. So, yeah, it's going to be very, very nice. So there you go. Um, as we do, we like to start the podcast with a funny or interesting or random factoid, and we have a couple. I have three, as a matter of fact. Would you like to know what it is? Sure. Well, first, let me kick this dramatic music. Yeah. (laughs) 
It's a subscription. We got to get all of our money's worth out of it. Oh. Yeah. So the inventor and the inventor of uh, Frisbee golf. This is factoids about him. No, oh, really. Are you ready? Sure. Edward Steady Ed Hedrick, who invented a game of Frisbee golf, made as one of his dying wishes that his family would cremate him and mold his remains into a Frisbee. Oh, God. Yes. When we die, we don't go to purgatory. We just land up on the roof and lay there. Oh, gosh. That's a quote from (laughs) Mr. Hedrick. Nice. Interesting random factoid number two. Okay. You ready for this one? Yeah. Pringles inventor (laughs) was buried in a Pringles can. Oh. Fred Bauer, the Procter & Gamble employee who devised the idea of stacking Pringles in the cans, asked that when he died, they could bury him in one of his signature cans. Oh, gosh. Are you ready for the third? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> coffee pioneer was buried in a coffee pot. Yeah. Bernardo Bialetti, the guy who popularized this stovetop coffee pot, right? The, the octagonal, octagonal espresso. espresso maker that everybody likes to use. Yeah also asked that his remains be buried in a receptacle that was most important to him in his life. When he died in 2016 at the age of 93, his ashes were placed in one of his pots and he was buried next to his late wife. Aww. Yes. What kind you know of what cool. she was buried in? The little container you put the coffee in. Oh, shush up. <laughs> That's right. Nice. There you go. Great. Those are interesting random facts or factoids. <laughs> Brought to you by Creep Geeks. Okay. I'm done. That's all I got. <laughs> that's all you've got. That's okay. right. That's the best production value we've had in a long time. All right. <laughs> it was pretty funny, man. It was. It's a <clears throat> weird. I mean, all those people. There's, like, there's actually a lot more, but those were the three that I thought were most important to me. Coffee mm-hmm. and chips. Mm-hmm. Frisbee golf, not so much. Okay. But I have played with a Frisbee before, and it has went on the roof where it stayed. I mean, it's probably there now. <laughs> so it's like once I get up on the roof, like, well, that's it. That's it. So. Bye-bye. So. There you go. Okay. Well, well, we can talk about some news. I know. I was trying to that's catch cool. up. Yeah. Um, it seems that there's a lot of flying cryptids in the news. So... Recently, there was a new Thunderbird sighting in Pennsylvania. Hold on. Let's back up on this because this is something we talk about on the regular. Uh, Mm -hmm. I'm always interested in flying cryptid type stuff, right? Like Mothman and Batman and Hawkman and Thunderbirds. Yes. And the the dinosaur flying bird thing because I can never remember. Rock. rock, Yeah, rock. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, gargoyles. Remember? Because so far in the past with 2018, we've talked about the gargoyle sighting in Spain. Right, multiple Mothman sightings, like a lot of them in the Chicago type area, multiple Thunderbird sightings, and multiple rock sightings or the dinosaur, like pterodactyl and Mothman, because the yeah, Mothman, Mothman bird sightings that were happening in um, Chicago, they seem to correlate along with Dogman sightings. Yes, you know. So, and I'm still really on the fence when it comes to the flying cryptid possibilities. Yeah. So I'm not always sure about them. I do think, though, the more southwest you go, the more westward into this country you go, yeah, there's a possibility of a large bird, but I don't I don't really know about a lot of the other ones. Well, <clears throat> yeah, I know. It's kind of weird, but there's a new Thunderbird sighting in Pennsylvania. And see, that's the thing that gets me. This is, you know, an East Coast state, so... Yeah. Mm, I don't know. But... A 47-year-old Luna A. told Cryptozoology News on Thursday that he encountered... 
<laughs> he had an encounter that took place in Chester County on November 26 at 6.30 a.m. The spe- specific place provided by the eyewitness was omitted in order to preserve her privacy. See, this is what's weird. Yeah. The article says a woman in Pennsylvania, and then it says yeah, he. he. Yeah. So what are they trying? Are they trying to deliberately confuse us? It, so we won't know who it is? Yeah. I read this sentence like twice before we did this episode, and I'm like... I don't, what's going on here? But <clears throat> from what I gather from the article, the reason this this location was kind of to keep her privacy, might be kind of close to where she normally travels on a regular basis. Yeah. But she was driving east when she saw a large bird gliding over the highway. At first I thought it was an extra large eagle, the healthcare worker said. But she adds, as she continued driving and the creature went over the car and in front of her, she was able to spot it more clearly. I realized just how big it actually was. The wingspan was twice the width of the car as it flew over and it headed straight toward my car. The feathers were black or very dark brown. As it flew over my car, I ducked a bit to look up at it through the windshield. It was amazing to see such a beautiful sight. If I hadn't been driving so fast, the speed limit there is 70, I could have attempted to take a photo, she explained. However, a sketch of the alleged creature was attached to the report. Yes. And See, here's what I like about this. Yeah. Wingspan was twice the width of the car. Yeah. That's relatively realistic because, like, if you look at our van, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Our ProMaster camper van, our DIY camper van, is at least 70 inches, well, let's say 80 inches, at least 80 inches wide on the inside. Yeah. It's really like 77 or something. Anyway, it's like almost 80 inches. So twice the width would be 160 inches. That'd be slightly more than 12 feet. Oh, okay. See, that's not, I mean, if you look at the table we're sitting at right here, and for those of you who are listening, you'll just have to, you know, yeah. pretend, right? We have, we're sitting at a six-foot table. So if this is one wing, and then you add the body and add another six-foot wing, that's not that big, really, in the grand scheme of things. That puts it more towards being realistically feasible than when people say, oh, it had a wingspan of 25 feet, and it was like 40 feet long and all this crazy stuff. That doesn't make any sense to me. I think that's just a little much. Yeah. But when you look at, like, California condors, I think they they can get a wingspan of up to eight feet. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you're looking at, like, maybe 12 feet or even slightly more than that, that's completely realistic, I think. And for me, that would be realistic in California, in the Southwest, especially or um, Alaska, or the Pacific Northwest. I just have a really hard time with Fathom, you know, just even believing this is possible here on the East Coast. Yeah, but why? Uh, Because the creatures out there are out towards that area, like towards the Southwest and the Pacific Northwest, they're built more rugged for survival. And because there are already species out there that are large enough to, let's just say if there was a freak one, it'd be possible for it to be bigger. Well, I mean, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think a big bird could hide pretty easily. Hmm. You know, because a big bird doesn't have to eat every day. I think it can swoop down and grab a deer or whatever and eat it. Yeah. And just kind of chill out for a while. It could fly in the evening or at dusk. And I mean, well, I depending mean, on where you were or where you are, yeah. unless it's flying over some like heavily populated area, you, you'll probably never. I mean, it would, I think it would be a lot easier to get away with it. You know yeah. what I mean? If you're the bird, you don't want to be seen. So, like owls, man, there's huge owls out there. And you never see them unless well, that's, they want you to see them. That's like one of the examples I'm trying to think of, like off the top of my head. There is an owl, and it's, like, in Arizona, and then it's, like, in Utah, and it's almost three and a half feet tall. Yeah. So, and let's just say each wing is at least, you know, three and a half, four feet. Eight feet, yeah, I can believe that. And then, you know, to go a species over to something more raptor-like, like the traditional Thunderbird description... Okay, it's plausible because it's a predatory bird. So I can make that leap. I just have a hard time making it here on the East Coast. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. know why. I mean, there's there's yeah. way I think my, there's way more to eat on the East Coast and places to hide. I think. My thing is, uh, so. the description she provides, or he, or whoever submitted this to cryptozoology, whoever submitted this, their description um, is believable to me. 
And I, I've been in the same boat, you know, driving 70 miles per hour, saw something weird. In fact, on our cross country trip, I saw a couple of weird things, but I was going 70. There's no way I could take a picture. I couldn't even take a picture of something I saw when I was going 60. Yeah. So safely without, you know, hurting myself. So I, I, I feel this person saw what they saw or what they believe they saw. So, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, there's been a lot this year. You know, you've got like, you know, two people spotted a Thunderbird in California. A giant bird was seen in Wyoming. Oregon man sees dinosaur bird. Massive winged creature in Canada. Thunderbird sighting in Maryland. Yeah. Right. And then even when you go back to it, <clears throat> there was even another recent sighting where this person seen, you know, three times the size of my SUV. It was a, p- a pterodactyl. Pterodactyl. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Flying overhead. It's like so. You know, I, I don't know, but it just seems like ever since we started paying attention to it, there's been a lot, and this a lot is, of sightings, right? Yeah. And this is in Ravina, uh, Ohio. It says a woman in Ohio Thursday, and this was a little while ago, yeah. saw a huge flying creature. 23-year-old woman. She provided a full name but asked to be re- not anonymous, right? Mm-hmm. And this is off Cryptozoology News. Uh, she was driving with her fiance when they spotted the oddity about Wednesday, about 5.45 p.m. We were at a red light. It flew over a hospital building. Oh. Right? Yeah. Um, they said it's it's about two to three times the size of their vehicle. It had elbow-like wings. It was darker than the sky. The wings were huge. And she explained that the unidentified animal was, a visible, uh, was only visible for about 10 seconds. I'm glad we both saw it, not just one of us. Yeah. And that sort of goes off of, like, the sighting that a, a Wisconsin man, you know, had where he said he sp- spotted a bird, right? Yeah. Like a pterodactyl. Oh, wow. So I was looking up uh, Ravenna, o- or Ravenna, Ohio. I can't say it. I think it's Ravenna. Ravenna, yeah. And, um, ooh, it's relatively close to one of Ohio's larger state parks, uh, West Branch. And that's the one that is in that swampy area where they've also had, like, Sasquatch sightings. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, it's surrounded by state parks. So that's totally believable. But see, I have a a harder time, you know, um, with a pterodactyl than I do just a big-ass bird. (laughs) I know. That's my thing. The pterodactyl thing I am not leaning towards at all, but... Especially up there. It's kind of cold, kind of wrong climate. See, that's what kind of makes you wonder. It's like, yeah. you know, when we talk about, like, flying through and having variances in time space. Yeah. Like little small, like, blips, you know. like I don't know. It's almost like they, you see it, it pops out of nowhere. It's flying, doing its thing, and then it just kind of goes away. What if they're doing that? What if they're, like, flying through... Like little blips in time where it's like, you know, the pterodactyl's in its time. Yeah. And then it pops in our time and then it pops back in its time. It doesn't know. It's just this, a bird, reptile bird flying around. Yeah. You know, I don't know. See, the, the pterodactyl one, I have a little bit of a hard time trying to figure out, like, what could it really be? Because I don't think it's a, a pterodactyl. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like that'd be really hard. To explain, because they don't have feathers and all that other stuff. I mean, they've they've got scant feathers, but according to recently uncovered remains, well, you know. But I mean, if yeah. you look at the the, you know, the one that we always see, it's like this Skin. fleshy bird, yeah, Ugh. like bat winged, like fleshy, you know, lizard bird. Yeah, yeah. I see this. I have a harder time with. I mean, I don't discount what they're saying. They said they see something. Who am I to say that they didn't see it? Right. It's like whatever. I don't care. Yeah. But the big, like the Thunderbird being, I think a larger bird can exist for yeah. sure. Like a real bird. Because if that bird was like six feet tall sitting in a tree in the middle of a national park or a forest, unless you're there to see it, you don't know it exists or don't <laughs> exist, right? <laughs> yeah. And if it's just sitting there minding its own business, it could sit there. And, I mean, and we'll, yeah, I, I think, I don't know. I, I mean, because our thing was like when, when we were in New Mexico and we would go to the foresty areas, we would see some huge birds. So it, it just, I've never seen, I think the biggest bird I've ever seen out here was accidentally spooked a barn owl once 
and it flew in front of me. No, so because was, we were out in the woods one time, and I showed yeah. you a woodpecker that was like a foot tall. Oh, yeah, I've never seen thing. the woodpecker. It's maybe a little bit bigger. I have. Now, with no tail. That thing was huge. Yeah. It was like a boot flying, like one of my boots. <laughs> a size 14 foot, man. This yeah. thing was huge. It's just blank, you know? Yeah, but, I mean, that's that's a far cry from like eight feet, you know? Yeah, but I know. But, I mean, think about it, though. If a normal woodpecker that you see is under six inches, and then you see one is like three to four times the size for whatever reason, hmm. wouldn't you be like, whoa, look at that big old woodpecker? Yeah. You know? And, like, every owl I've seen has not been like three feet tall. So if I did see a three foot tall, you know, Al, it'd be kind of freaky. Well, I had like a two foot. Well, think about that. that we seen a that freaking rabbit, that big jack rabbit. We seen that thing was almost yeah. like three and a half, four feet tall, and his <laughs> ears stood up like another. It was like a person standing on the side of the road. And see, I never really told you when I would hike in the deserts, that thing wasn't that uncommon. I would see some really big jack rabbits, and Pepper would go crazy for them. Well, yeah, I'm just saying, but, though, yeah, it's huge. But I mean, but realistically, is it out of the realm? A possibility. I don't know. I think things are smaller out here. I don't know, man. It's like there's like <laughs> eighty pound catfish. Well, that's like why different. should a catfish get eighty pounds? That's different. It's a product of its environment, right? Yeah. The environment, the warm water next to a power plant or something like that. Especially if you're in North Carolina, everybody's heard about like, oh yeah, next to Duke Power, man, they got big old catfish. Anywhere there's like a warm <laughs> water sort of power plant thing, you got huge catfish, right? Yeah. Because you all hear the story of like. Yeah, the diver went down there and he said he's seen, you know, two eyes the size of softballs with like three feet between them, right? And a body the size of a small Volkswagen. Yeah, yeah I remember so that. So your product of your environment, <clears throat> where you're eating and all that stuff, I, I just think yeah. that it's more likely that there is the possibility of seeing, you know, And environmentally, I would, it, I would picture the Thunderbirds being more towards the southwest because the southwest is But if they're migratory, eh, yeah. I mean, maybe you got one that's hanging out around Pennsylvania. <laughs> And then it's, you know, it's starting to get colder, right? Because here we are. And we forgot to mention, we've been snowed in for a good day and a half. Yeah. It snowed really hard, and there's like a tree. It's uh, in the road in front of the compound that we'll have to take care of. We. Once we pop out of the, the bunker. So, anyway. So, we're snowed in. <laughs> what are we going to do? But, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I Whenever I see the pterodactyl stuff, I'm like, eh, I don't know about all that. I don't believe in that, right? It's like, oh. I can't. But, um, you know, when I see the big bird, just a regular old big bird. Like California condors, man, those things are ginormous, yes, right? They, there said, was like four of those. Yeah. Now there's like, what, 14? Um, 40? That's a good probably question. 100 or something now. I don't yeah. Know. So I think it's possible. I do. That's what I'm thinking. Possibilities are there. It does get you thinking, though. Oh, they're, the California condor is doing well enough to slowly get reintroduced to northern Arizona and southern Utah. So it's doing better. Yeah, well, how big is it? Um, mass 20 to 24 pounds. Doesn't say the, 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 the big. That's like a big bodied turkey. That's a tasty turkey. Yeah. Yeah. Delicious. <laughs> Minus all the salmonella. That's one thing I, I kind of missed about New Mexico. Salmonella? No. Well, yeah, but um, <laughs> being seeing bald eagles so often, you know? Yeah. So. And they're really not bald. Well, they, they are a species of them. They just have white feathers in their head. Yeah. Uh, nine, Buzzards are bald. 9.8 foot wingspan. That's like a table and yeah. a half. Look at this. A weight, yeah. This is a six-foot table, right? Yeah. Let's add another three feet to it. Yeah. That's a ginormous bird. A weight of up to, typically, 26 pounds and nearly equals that of the trumpeter swan, the heaviest amongst native North American bird species. Well, how big is that bird? The trumpeter swan? Um, its wingspan may exceed 10 feet. And I don't know. i got to click on the link. Wow, it doesn't say. That bird is big. Yeah. Oh, wow. It was also endangered. In 1933, less than 30 of them, or uh, less than 70 of them were known to exist. And ex extinction was imminent. So. Just think of how many pillows. 28 pounds. You can feel. <laughs> Finally found it. Um, adult birds. Uh, twenty eight to thirty eight pounds, or twenty eight to thirty pounds. Wow! So yeah, that's a big 
pillow bird. Oh wow! And these are totally different from the other swans. They they look, they definitely look bigger, but they're shaped slightly heftier. So wow. Uh, they, I think they prefer the term husky. <laughs> but that's a dog. That's a husky. Uh, it's a husky uh, bird. California condors are not pretty. Nope. They look like buzzards. So. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, they are still though considered critically endangered. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, there you go. Yep. Okay, so we got a Thunderbird sighting, mm-hmm. right? A, a, a pterodactyl sighting, three times the size of my SUV. I wonder how... There's oh. another <laughs> pterodactyl sighting in Wisconsin. Yeah. Right? So the sighting in Wisconsin, anonymous man, Yeah. said he and his father were driving home late. It's August. Mm-hmm. Around 2 o'clock. So we had dropped my mom off at some place where she'd be there for a week. <laughs> they don't have no details, right? And 30 minutes into the five-hour drive, I saw a weird thing flying in the sky. Yeah. So the eyewitness says the animal was approximately six feet tall and had skin instead of feathers. Yeah. Like a bat. Yeah. It looked like a pterodactyl or some kind of an angel. He also added that he wasn't able to gather video evidence, but there could be other eyewitnesses. And then last month, you had the Texas guy that said he'd seen a dinosaur bird, right? And in 1890, the Arizona newspaper, the Tombstone Epitaph, reported that two ranchers had allegedly killed a winged monster, similar to an alligator in the desert between uh, the Whetstone and uh, Huchaca Mountains. 1927, Yeah. uh, a similar event happened in Australian town of Fernville where a few giant birds visited the area, causing a panic. 2015, a man in Michigan, giant bird, 10-foot wingspan. Hmm. 2015, two people in Nevada, right? Yeah. Two people saw the creature reminding them of a petrosaur. It's like a flying reptile. Two, two weeks after that in July, a minister and her daughter claimed to see an unidentified flying creature look looked like it was straight out of Jurassic Park. Yeah. And then Thunderbird, also known as rock, is a nomenclature used by Native Americans to refer to a bird-like creature with reptile features. Right? A bird-like creature with reptile features. Mm-hmm. Could be a petrosaur. Or a pterodactyl. Or a pterodactyl. So, <laughs> 2015 wonder, had a lot yeah. of sightings, and there was a lot of sightings this year, too. And see, that's the thing with these larger flying cryptids. Seems like a two year cycle almost. Like is two years their migratory pattern? I don't know. Yeah. And see, that's something too. It's like you, you go for a while, you don't see or hear anything about it, and then all of a sudden you 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 see it. Or yeah. well, I mean you hear about it, and it's just kinda like that's kinda weird. That's like um It's like Mothman, right? The whole yeah. Mothman thing and the flying humanoid, the you know, flying you know, upright bipedal cryptid flying thing. Yeah. The bat guy. There's been a ton of those. Like here recently. Well, last year. Like and then And this year. Yeah. Like in Hamilton, Montana, bat winged humanoid observed near Hamilton, Montana. Right? Yeah. But it's an account from twenty ten. Yeah. But see, this goes back to what you were saying. Montana is kind of one of those out of the way places, right? Yeah. So it says, um, here's <coughs> here's what it says. Jump choking. Mm-hmm. Um Okay. I was living in Hamilton, Montana with my current girlfriend. It was late at night. My friend and I would always go for a drive. I guess you got nothing else to do in Montana, right? So, like, wide open <laughs> spaces and all that stuff. Yeah. At least that's what they say. Uh, we need to go there. I, I'd like to go to Montana. Me too. We, we parked in an empty parking lot outside of the gym. It was on the outskirts of town. My friend had his medical marijuana cart, right? And he would smoke while we would talk about random shit. And here's the thing. Did they even have med- medical marijuana in 2010? Yes. Well, I already did. I was just wondering about that. It was very limited, though. So, huh. yeah. Because I think most medical marijuana states started in 2008. Huh. So, yeah. Started so, in California. <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah. And so they go around and talk about random stuff. It says that we work together in workplace drama is usually a discussion. And so after we're done hanging out, I started, hit, you know, started my car and headed back towards town. Sort of heading towards the outlet to take a right on the main street. I was about 50 feet away from the outlet. When I decided the mood called in for some loud music. 
My genre was rap, and I can't for the life of me remember the song it played, right? To give you an idea of what was in our field of view, the outlet had two white fences on each side that spanned the property. It was one of those fences that had logs with spaces between them. So um, the vision was partially blocked on the right and the left side. Granted, it was also pretty dark. It was, and uh, this is when the crap hit the fan. Yeah. Out of the corner of my eye, if you've seen what appeared to be a dusty brown ball of plastic or garbage that rolled into view from the other side of the house to the right of the fence. <laughs> All right, it's a rolling ball of trash, right? Mm-hmm. So we were driving as this was happening, but as soon as I got to, you know, a better look, I knew that this was not a piece of garbage blowing in the wind. I immediately realized it was a winged, flesh-like creature that appeared to have crash-landed during flight. Huh. Hmm. I thought my eyes were deceiving me, and I immediately turned to my friend, who let out one of the most blood-curdling screams I have ever heard in my entire life. Yeah. That's probably scarier than seeing the thing. So I kept looking at him and looking back at this thing, and my friend got so scared, he flew his legs up in the air, up against the passenger side window and windshield, as if that would shield him from this creature that we're approaching. (laughs) So I kept repeating, what is that? What is that? And as soon as the creature came to his senses, it planted its feet and took off flying in the opposite direction from my car. Hmm. At this point, I stopped the car, and all I remember is heavy breathing from both my friend and I, right, probably from the adrenaline, as we watched the silhouette of this thing fly away. The wingspan of this creature was at least six to eight feet. It seemed to have some webbing like a bat, no feathers. And we watched until it was not visible, um, which took a good while. You know, Montana, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I remember my friend told me, please just take me home. And we took off and headed back to town. I kept asking, what was that? And I don't think there were very many words spoken between us at that point. I just kept asking, what was that? And to which point his friend, who screamed like a a girl and started kicking the windshield (laughs) out of fear, said, I don't effing know, man. So he dropped him off. I went home and told my girlfriend, who was laughing at how animated and serious I was, telling what happened. The next day, I woke up right, and immediately called him and said, what did you see? Mm-hmm. And I wanted him to tell you know, what he first <laughs> He told me it was a flesh-like creature. It was not a bird. There were no feathers. And I asked him what color it was. And he says, brownish. And I said, sort of gray. And he said, oh, my God, yes. And he says, I no longer talk to this friend. As he, as he slipped into unfortunate issue of prescription pills. Yeah. I wish we still had friendship as we have and want to talk to him ever since it happened. So basically, we both nearly saw the exact same thing and nearly sh- you know, pooped our pants. You know, shitted, <laughs> shitted our pants. Right. So, yeah. The way I would describe this thing is a gigantic bat slash humanoid with wings. There was not one feather on this flying creature. That's what makes it gross. It's like this flying fleshy thing, right? Ugh. So, my theory as to why it was rolling around on the ground as if it crashed landed on the sky. I think my subwoofer sound system might have messed with this navigation. Like a bat. Yeah. Yeah. This is by far one of the craziest stories. This dude thinks he's got such a banging system he can just knock a cryptid out of the sky. (laughs) How dare you? We're moving on from this guy already. Well, well, because that would actually... You know what I say, right? What? Yeah. So that would actually happen though in Albuquerque. What you'd, you'd what you'd fire up your base your banging base system and knock no, a cryptid out of the sky? They would, they would have those little base shows. Well, yeah, but I mean, where it would be all the little cars competing, and it would mess up the little bats that hid in the uh, little spillway tunnels, like over there by Juan Tabo. <laughs> Doesn't mess them up like that. I mean, that would take an awful lot of base. Yeah. To knock well, a six or they seven would fire foot. them all off at once, all the cars at once. Okay, so. this guy in Montana, yeah, smoking weed or medical weed with his friend. Which, I don't think his system is going to be that strong. I stand corrected. It was passed into law in 2004 in Montana. So wow, yeah. that's nice. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. So you're listening to Creepy Geek Podcast. We're going to take a little break. We'll be right back.
Audible is an audio entertainment that entertains, educates, and inspires. For you, the listeners of the Creep Geeks podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com forward slash cheapgeek. Again, that's audibletrial.com forward slash cheapgeek for your free audiobook. And welcome back. We missed you. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that's enough of that flying bird stuff, whether it's a pterodactyl or a mothman or a giant winged fleshy creature that some dude in Montana has such a banging bass system that he theorizes they knock it out of the sky. <laughs> right? I'm not saying. Or a bird that's twice the size of an SUV or a pterodactyl that's three times the size of an SUV. I'm not saying he did it alone. I'm not Unlikely. He had the power of bass, homie. Yeah. He's like, whoa, what's that? Bass, 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 bass. <laughs> and it knocked it right out of the sky, right? Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Got a little rant for you. We have a section called rant section. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when we find something that we want to rant about, we'll put it in here. This is not really a rant. This is more of an observation for me. Oh. A city, and we'll get to who it is, right? Yeah. Threatens a $50,000 fine for extravagant Christmas light show. Oh, gosh. This is the Bah Humbug. Bah Humbug. <laughs> bah Humbug. <laughs> Part of the podcast. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So. Wow. This city is mm-hmm. going to threaten, you know, a $50,000 fine for an extravagant light show. Christmas light show. Yeah. From a New Jersey couple. I'm going to sneeze. Oh, okay. <clears throat> So it looks like a New Jersey couple uh, said city officials told them they would be charged $50,000 for continuing their 15-year tradition of extravagant Christmas light displays. Um, Tom and Chris Apruzzi say they spend three months each year meticulously setting up the more than 300,000 lights decorating their Old Bridge home for the holidays, but officials are now trying to charge them $50,000 to continue their 15-year tradition. Uh, The couple says, we had a meeting with the mayor and the chief of police the other night, and they blatantly told us that this is what you will pay in order to put this Christmas light display on this year. Um, And then this is what they told the local news. The couple said they were told the cost, which amounts to $2,000 per day that the lights would be illuminated, would go towards police security and bus transportation to reduce the traffic that the light show brings in each year. The Apruzzi said they are trying to crowdfund to cover the costs, but they are planning to start the light show December 1st, whether or not they meet their goal. I'm not taking it down, they said. It's my religious right and my First Amendment right. I do this for the veterans and everything else like that. If people have a problem with it, I can't say anything about it. There are people that are going to be happy, and there are always people that are going to be unhappy. Yeah. And Okay. I know exactly what's going on here, and I'm so annoyed. Um, the the $2,000 per day would go towards police security and bus transportation to reduce the traffic. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody last year had an auditor figure out all those costs and compare it to if they, the city itself was going to put on a public event. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, you know, seriously, I had to, I was going to sneeze. I didn't <clears throat> sneeze. I thought I was going to die. Yeah. 
But uh, you know what? Screw them. <laughs> right? New Jersey couple. Yeah. You know, they're going to fight to fight. They, they put on, they have good intentions. Some people are going to like it. Some people don't. So somebody probably wrote in because they didn't like it. And they said, you know, hey, with all this going on, and pointed out where the city's liability would be. Oh, See? yeah. So somebody probably wrote in. You know, and was like, you know, you guys could be liable or whatever. And then so the city now has to take action. Or somebody's calling and complain. Somebody of, of relative importance has called and complained to the city. Well, and now they're going to try to bill them for it. Well, here's the thing. Police security. When would that topic come up either from a citizen perspective or from these guys' perspective? Unless an incident has already occurred or somebody threatened an incident. Yeah, or somebody wants it to not happen, so yeah. they, they point out logistics. Yeah. You know? But and say, hey. We had that there's like this one neighborhood in Virginia Beach that does this uh, where I grew up. It's actually, it's not where I grew up. We used to drive to this neighborhood in Virginia Beach to see the Christmas lights yeah. every year because the whole neighborhood, right down to someone would paddle a boat to the middle of the lake and decorate a little tiny island. And we would all, you know, everybody in Virginia Beach would drive through this respectfully <clears throat> and watch the light displays. Right. And it wasn't a big deal. Yeah, it towards you know towards me getting older as an adult, it would get a little bit traffic back up, but it was respectable. Yeah, and you know, and and what do you, most people are bringing like kids. Yeah, so nobody's speeding through. Nobody's threatening to hurt anybody. Yeah. I mean, granted, I don't know how people behave in New Jersey, but I'm assuming around the holidays, people would be civil to each other, not threatening someone's First Amendment right to express themselves. I mean, and this isn't cheap. 300,000 lights? They're already paying like a crazy electric bill. Yeah. So they're. this is truly an expression of themselves, and it is an expression to be seen by their community, and I feel that the city is... Well, here's an update. Yeah. So evidently this is like an old bridge, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. And the mayor says, I'm not a Grinch. But the update is, is that the holiday light show is going to go on because the homeowner has hired an attorney. Oh. Right? <laughs> yeah. And so despite display, despite concerns that the display cost the township $45,000 plus to cover police and security costs with trial control and safety, so now it's gone up. Right? Mm -hmm. So Thomas Apruzzi and his wife, Chris, mm -hmm. have decided they're going for it anyway, and they've been putting on that light display for 15 years. Yeah, that's sad. Yeah. Yeah. And so there was a meeting about it, right, where they're talking about all this stuff, and it's like a Prudy came out of the meeting says, um, he came out of the meeting with an incorrect understanding of the township's concerns. Yeah. This is according to the mayor, who says, I'm not a Grinch. Right. His name is Mayor Owen Henry. I'm not a Grinch. It's all about public safety. Uh, we need to take the steps that are necessary to make sure the event goes off in a safe, orderly manner. We have not told Mr. Apruzzi to shut his lights off. Uh, we have, <laughs> right, not, yeah. and I will not. So now how did this guy, Mr. Apruzzi, go from thinking that he was going to have to pay $25,000? What was it, 25000 Yeah. $25,000 to having a misunderstanding. Oh, no. It was a f total of $2,000 a day or $50,000 <coughs> All right. There you the go. $50,000. Yeah. yeah. but how, do, how did he have such a huge misunderstanding? I don't know, considering he says it's amazing how all of a sudden, in a matter of about 12 hours, the mayor is changing his story. Yeah. I'm not paying for nothing. <laughs> so, what I'm thinking happened was mm -hmm. he was probably contacted by some rude letter oh. it said hey if you put this show on we're gonna basically make you liable for two thousand dollars a day for a total of fifty thousand dollars for the show yeah you know because we all have had correspondence from city workers and people who just don't understand how tense and um uh, like we're talking literary right tense tone inflection all that stuff in writing is important these days probably got a, a crappy letter or an email that made it sound pretty hardcore because the person doesn't know how to put empathy in what they write. 
Yeah. This guy got all fired up. Mr. Prusy's like, ah, you know what? I got me a lawyer. I'm doing it anyway. <clears throat> and then the the mayor's like, I'm not a Grinch. Oh, so what I'm thinking is either it was a misunderstanding or it wasn't and he got called out. And now it's... You know. I don't know. I'm starting to lean towards... <clears throat> I think someone from the city sent a poorly worded yeah. letter. Especially when you Google these people. Um, they are on best free Christmas light shows dot com or something like that some yeah that, like, i mean they're on these major websites as being the best free light show it has its own facebook page it has its own nbc art and yeah nbc articles from years ago all the way till now not so, mentioning this this thing is famous yeah and you know that brings people into their little town yeah oh but it does have a slightly uh tongue-in-cheek name i think what? TNA Sprinklers Light Show. <laughs> well. Yeah. Is that a sponsor? No, that's the name of their company, I think. So, mm. yeah. Yeah. My, my, you know, what does it really hurt? I, you know? <laughs> yeah. What does it really hurt? I mean, they're putting up this stuff. It's famous. It brings people in. Got some notoriety to it. Somebody somebody probably shot off a crappy letter to this guy and he got all worked up over it, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like the light display became an issue last year when residents complained to the township about the sparkling musical light display attracting so many people. So in response, uh, township police were reportedly set up in the neighborhood to help with traffic. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So, as a result, Apuzzi says he intends to only turn the lights on Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays from 6 to 10 p.m. from December 1st through January 1st. Huh. And he also intends on the show running all week during the Christmas week. Yeah. It's 16 hours a week, and they want to charge us $8,000 a week to direct people and tell them where to walk. In addition... It will cost me an additional $750 a night for the shuttle service. And the mayor doesn't want to hear anything. He just wants to shut us down. So, you know, what I'm looking at here is the mayor is saying one thing. Oh, it's a, he had a misunderstanding, but it sounds like he's got a pretty itemized d- bill. Yeah. So how could he misunderstand what the mayor is saying? I think this got a lot of traction, got a lot of, got a lot of eyeballs on it. And yeah. people are like, you know, kind of fired up and he kind of do a little uh, so, backpedal. Oh, and here they're pointing out. When the Board of Education has a football game for the local high school, the city, they, pay for the police department to be there. This is not something new. Uh, You know, a football game for the high school, that's a community event. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, And there is a misquote from the mayor someplace that was like, I assume he will be sent a bill on Monday for what it will cost us over the weekend just to show him where it stands. And I'm like, uh... And see, Henry said that there was a, an increased number of complaints lodged last year. Yeah. And this year leading up to the event. So it's not, but it's not about the complaints. It's about public safety. But, okay. Yeah. We've had a number of people come to my office and voice their concerns. I have to admit I share their concerns, but this isn't complaint driven. It's about public safety. We've dodged bullets during the last couple of years. We've had so many close calls there. Really? I bet if you ask them, hey, how many people actually showed up, they couldn't say. So I could kind of see that <coughs> go, with... Yeah. With the rise in social media and probably some dummy trying to drive past and Instagram yeah. it at the same time. So I can kind of see that. But that's where you enforce little speed checks and maybe put up a sign, a sign that costs two or three hundred dollars, not seven hundred and fifty or two grand, you know? Um eight grand a week. Yeah. And like you can put those little signs that have the little speed thing and flashy lights. Which, you know, kind of ineffective. It's Christmas lights. But, you know, you're going too fast or slow down. Um, or a bike cop, you know? Um, yeah. Now- we have determined that the additional police resources are going to cost the township of Old Bridge, every taxpayer in Old Bridge, about $2,000 per night. That money is not in our budget. Every tax. Okay. Hmm. I think somebody's just really bad with words there. Yeah. Well, what they're trying to say is it's <laughs> yeah. going to cost everybody. Everybody is paying for this, whether yeah. you like it or not. Now, interesting, at uh, one of the township council meetings recently, the council voted down an ordinance that would have restricted parking 
to residential parking only on Central, West, Brookside, and Riverdale Avenues. So I guess that vote ultimately led, kind of tipped the boiling pot on this or whatever, because that would have affected people being able to see this light show. Over the last six or seven years, the light show has raised about $13,000 for Home for Home for Our Troops, and more than twelve thousand dollars for St. Jude's, and more than twenty five hundred for Old Bridge PBA. Wow! So they they take those donations because Mister Pruzzi has spent like thousands and thousands of dollars on this. Starts putting up the stuff in July to get it ready. That only equals twenty seven thousand dollars, twenty seven thousand five hundred dollars that they've raised in six or seven years. Right. But then they're trying to say the bill's fifty per season. Yeah. Well, see, they yeah. they, they take those donations and they. They donate them, yeah. so it's it's a good cause, for kind of a thing. Yeah. So, I have no idea how much the gold, how much the um, uh, GoFundMe. Oh, it only raised thirteen hundred dollars. That was by like Wednesday. Lot, yeah. <laughs> of, of this article, so yeah. <clears throat> According to the GoFundMe account, for fifteen years, Thomas and Chris have Prusy been putting on a Christmas light display, which has become tradition not only for their family, for but for many families in Old Bridge and neighboring towns. And residents will tell you uh, that they were brought to the Prusy House as kids and now bring their kids to witness the amazing display. Right? Yeah. So the TA, Sprinkler Light Show, became world (laughs) famous in 2014 and in 2017. And then, you know, it's supposed to be on this. It's also going to compete on the ABC Great Christmas Light Fight for the 2019 season. Yeah, so it's done. It's competed in 2014 and now 2019. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. But the Apruzzi family respectfully re- uh, declined out of consideration for their neighbors as they already attract a large amount of foot traffic each night. So they're like, we're not going to compete because, you know, our neighbors, we don't want all the extra traffic that's going to show up. Oh. Yeah. So the TA Sprinkler Light Show is scheduled to kick off Saturday, December 1st. And there you go. So is it still going on? Did they do it? I don't know. If you're listening to this podcast, you know it's well past the first. (laughs) What has happened? Yeah. This is just one of those things where the city wants to get involved and they're like, hey, we're going to charge you for all these services if you don't quit. They probably tried to browbeat this guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. By saying, hey, if you're going to put on the show after we don't want you to, we're going to charge you this much money. And he's like, bring it. And they're like, well, hold on a second. What do you mean bring it? So, so far they have raised $4,759 out of their $75,000 goal. Oh, okay. So they they have, the, the show is going on. As of five days ago, <clears throat> CBS New York posted a video of the Christmas oh. light display costing a family $3,000 a day. So. Nice. Yeah, so that's our rant. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, and part of it is, it's like, it goes to the Bah Humbug. They've been doing it for 15 years. It's a good cause. They donate the money or any kind of proceeds they've been getting. They've been donating it, right? Mm-hmm. I think the city jumped in here and tried to browbeat these people. The township kind of, you know, jumped in there and tried to say, hey, here's what's going to happen. They probably sent them like a crap email. They got all mad about it. And dude's fighting back. He's like, I lawyered up. I just find it go. very interesting that the cost per season that the city says that it's costing them to allow this to happen is double the charity efforts that these guys have ever raised. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think it actually costs that much money. I'm pretty sure you could probably hire like five or six off-duty police officers, right? And yeah. pay them, let's say five. Or they could donate And you could pay time. them $100 an hour. Yeah. That's 500 bucks. For two or three hours, right? How much is that? Fifteen hundred bucks? Yeah. For a day? I mean, come on. It's it can't be that much. Can't be. I don't know. I just oh, bah humbug. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go, Mayor. I think you are a Grinch. I think you got popped. I think you got caught. Called talking out. Talking out of both sides of your face. <laughs> so I don't know. I just don't like it when government jumps in on. Yeah, I don't think government's the good guys here necessarily. No. It'd be different if he just had some crap display up or whatever. I don't know. But so after I read that, you know, with the article, I got a little fired up about it. I'm like, what? How dare you? And then it came more Christmas story stuff. And this is one I thought was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. 
Runaway inflatable Santa Claus blocks traffic. <laughs> that reminds me of what happened in New Mexico when we moved there. Yes. Yeah. So uh, this runaway inflatable Santa Claus was uh, spotted on a busy English road. Commuters were delayed by an unusual hazard, and that was the runaway right. inflatable claws blocking the whole road. <clears throat> A video captured on Tuesday surprised witness Mohammed Farid on a road in Wisbeck showing the inflatable Father Christmas rolling through lanes of traffic on this busy road. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, Farid said the Santa had apparently come loose from where it had been displayed in a nearby resident's front yard. He said the Santa was bigger than his car. <laughs> yeah. And you can see it. It looks like, I think that's a double decker right there. It's oh man, that's bad. This thing's like twenty, thirty feet tall, man. Yeah. It's huge. It's a big Santa. Oh so, there is a car. <laughs> yeah. And uh it is yeah, it's like giant orbs. So I thought that was kind of funny. We'll put a link delayed. in the show notes. Um yeah. and every, everything we talk about there is a link in the show notes if you want. To the video. But yeah. this reminds me of this was like the first year that we moved to New Mexico. We lived off a very major road in Rio Rancho <laughs> called Unser. And um Someone had not this big, but they had a Santa Claus with a chimney on top of their roof. Yeah. And you don't put inflatable objects on your roof during tumbleweed wind season. He blew off and rolled down Unser towards Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> All over the place, and people were swerving. Someone actually ran up onto the sidewalk. It and it's bad enough, a, too, when you have like yeah. balloon fiesta, you get like hot air balloons just bouncing off cars and yeah. stuff sometimes, and power lines. And but it actually caused an like accident. A, like the bus probably being dragged across the road as he's trying to, you know. <laughs> yeah. They finally had a balloon actually get hit by a car and dragged. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> and I think that was the, the first year we moved there, too. Or it was yeah. the second. Yeah. But, oh, yeah, I don't know. I think that's silly. If you're going to have an inflatable, you know, Christmas display, which are really cool looking. Some people you got to make sure you got the thing secured, yeah, man. Yeah, freaking tack them down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rope them down. So, you know, in my my Christmas tree light rant was almost as, it was, it was two things that could have been my rant this yeah. time. Okay. So I, I chose the Christmas lights because it's the holiday season. My other rant was going to be Florida woman pulled knife on man who complained about her farts. <laughs> so, you know, you're going to, it's, first off, whenever you see pulled a knife on a man who complained about her farts, you're going to read it. Okay. And the gold part of this whole thing is it's a Florida woman, not a Florida man. Ah. Uh. Yeah. So this is in uh, Florida, <laughs> right? <laughs> A Florida woman faces an aggravated assault charge after authorities say, this is where it's, I started laughing, she passed gas in line at a dollar store. <laughs> I'm like, all right. And pulled a knife on a man who complained about it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so, you know, citing a Broward County Sheriff's Office report, the Miami Herald report says, or the Miami Herald reports, that a 37-year-old Shanita, whatever, doesn't matter, passed gas while waiting in line at a Dollar General Sunday night and upset a nearby customer. <laughs> the report says the offended customer and Wilson, that's the lady's last name, then got into an argument in reference to the defendant farting loudly. That's the only quote. Oh, yeah. I wish I knew exactly what was said. <laughs> <laughs> it's like farting loudly. It says that then Wilson <clears throat> pulled a small folding knife out of her purse and told the victim she was going to gut him. Yeah. While moving as if to attack him? So Wilson was arrested and charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon without intent to kill. And it's unclear at this time if she had a lawyer. I'm I'm sorry if you get called out like that and it hurts your feelings that bad. Go home, get out of line. I I don't understand why violence is needed over a fart. Well, maybe it was embarrassing. I understand <clears throat> being embarrassed. I'm sure that what must have been embarrassing. Well, I mean, you know, what if the guy was like really loud about it? 
It's like, you know, <laughs> Maybe it was like a she small farted poop? loudly, and he was like, "What are you doing?" You know, it just got all crazy, and she wanted just him to be quiet. <laughs> or like the uh, some movie, it was like the. I liked it. It was unclear if she has a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I don't. So, what was the rant about that? I don't remember now exactly, but I, it, it's it was basically about being in dollar stores in general. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, I love dollar stores. They kept me alive for a long time. Yeah. Um, but this is Dollar General, and yeah. every time I've been to Dollar General, there's <laughs> always a cranky person there. So, I don't know. I think the fact that it's a bad situation, people are grumpy, people are frustrated. And if we look at the date on this, oh, it's a, you know, it's prime time holiday shopping season. Everybody is already in a bad mood. So, if you're out in the holidays doing your Christmas shopping, doing your holiday shopping, and somebody passes gas, just let it go, man. Just let it go. Step back two feet. I don't know. Just no need to start a fight or stab somebody this Christmas season. And then I had one more stupid news that I wanted to read to you guys. (laughs) And this happens... This happened in Albuquerque. It's a part of our uh, stupid New Mexico or Florida news, and I, I couldn't believe this because this is actually one of my friend, one of my friends back homes or back in New Mexico's favorite places. Thief uses slingshot to break into popular Albuquerque bakery and steals delicious treat. <laughs> so, a popular ba- bakery in Albuquerque. It's uh, called Golden Crown Panaderia. Um, a couple of my friends from one of my old jobs used to go there all the time. Uh, the owner told KOB News the thief had a slingshot, broke through this window, climbed through, and jumped over our front counter. They posted the surveillance video on social media. So um, police responded quickly, collected evidence, including a video which shows a suspect with tattoos on his neck and hand. Uh, he didn't take much but caused $1,000 worth of damage ruined 100 dozen biscochitos. <laughs> <laughs> he also is shown taking off with a dessert. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, according to I'm the... I'm over here coughing to death, and this dude stole like, the, <laughs> the driest... Yeah, it's like... <clears throat> the, the driest snack. Yeah. Um. So, you know, the the cop... In this article, he's like, he laughs. He's like, right. On his way out, he's like, I'll take this pastry. (laughs) Just heads out. Like, I'll show you. (laughs) Yeah. And it stinks because this particular uh, little bakery is apparently frequented by cops in the morning. So it's a very popular community bakery. Um, Some of my friends at one of my old jobs, they would actually go there and bring us some cold treats. It was a very tasty place. But, yeah, let me just... Shatter your window with a slingshot on camera and then steal your treats. <laughs> Were they open? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, see, that's the part I can't see in this article. It doesn't mention it, but it seems like it happened overnight, so they had to use the video footage. So, yeah. That's crazy. But <clears throat> imagine that. I mean, you could break into places with, like, like, there's this uh, store near one of my old jobs. People kept breaking into it. They would use car parts to pry open the steel doors. Yeah. And when then when that stopped working, they would just take cinder blocks or actual cars to break in. This dude took a slingshot. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. That's funny. So. Very and, nice. And I will put a link to that in the show notes because it's pretty funny. <laughs> oh, yep. So he tried to take off with some cash, and then you can see him grab the pastry. <laughs> Maybe he just needed something. Just a little uh, something. Yeah. But, you know, a slingshot. He's like, here we go. Very nice. <clears throat> yeah. Got a little uh, Dollar General fart in my throat. <laughs> I was choking to death over here. As we're all snowed in. We have to acclimate. Uh. That's another thing. On top of moving out here, it's a completely different location, completely different allergies, different elevation, which has actually hit me pretty hard. And we got all of our amazing sound curtains from Amazon from China, so. Yeah. 
Who knows? They smell like shipping containers sometimes. And mothballs. Yeah. Hey, uh, you ever smelled mothballs? <sighs> no. <laughs> I'm not falling for this joke. <laughs> All right. If you know the rest of that joke, leave it in the comments somewhere. <laughs> or contact us at <laughs> contact at creepgeeks.com and we'll give you the answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we're still acclimating to our new podcast studio as well as just being here. Um. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. Anything else? Nope. Okay. I would say we have some announcements, but we don't. Yeah. Although we are going to and planning to, whether permitting, attending a local event. It's a paranormal gathering about past lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, M and D Paranormal and Cryptid Research LLC. Is evidently putting this thing on, so <clears throat> we're gonna go see. Yep. Since it's it's it, within our hundred mile radius, we're gonna go check it out and see what it's all about. As part of what we talked about, and we're gonna go, and they don't know we're coming, which is not a big deal. It's not threatening or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But we're gonna you know figure out what it's all about, take some notes, and uh, we may or may not report on it. If it's something that's worth talking about, we're probably gonna report on it on our next podcast. Because hey, why not? Why not go see what's up with this stuff? Hmm. So, I mean, we went before and had an amazing time with the old uh, the uh, Navajo Rangers. So maybe yeah. this will be something cool. So there you go. <clears throat> but if you're listening to this podcast and you're in Western North Carolina, uh, there is a link. And if you want to go, um, it's free. I think we're going to add the event to our, our Facebook page, too, just to help people out. Well, we're probably going to reach out to them first. Okay. Yeah. So, just because. That's probably the polite thing to do now that we're back in the South. Yeah. Got to be polite. And I do want to let people know, um, since it is the holidays, if you are interested in holiday swag, we do have cool Bigfoot logo shirts and sweatshirts in the Teespring store. You can go there by going to teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash Creep Geeks podcast store. And those each have a dash in them. Yeah. The link will be in the show notes. We do have an Xmas Rush last minute discount of 25% going on in the shop. So cool. use promo yeah. code Xmas Rush. We don't really make any money off t shirts and stuff no. like that. So if you want to get a shirt, it's relatively inexpensive. Got a cool logo on it. Yep. Go for it. Yeah. It's very, very nice. I still got to figure that stuff out. Yeah. <laughs> but that's really, uh, that's really about it. Okay. So there you go. So, um,. Well, as far as like things that we may have been watching on TV or following along, interesting things that we'd like to pass along to you guys, mm-hmm. and what we call binge-worthy BS, we don't have television. I'm just saying. We don't have internet. We don't have television. Kind of. Well. The, the new season of Vikings has started. I didn't watch any of those because we don't have television. We don't. We have relatives that... Too. Well, we have relatives that, that we don't. <clears throat> I didn't watch it. I watched part of it. Oh. So, yeah. You've been sneaking off. Mm-hmm. And then... Oh, I'm going to the store. I'll be right back. Four hours later. We did manage to watch part of uh, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Oh, yeah. That on Netflix. And the only reason why I watched that is because it was filmed in large chunks of where we just moved from. Yeah, like exactly large. Like we knew exactly where they filmed that stuff at. Yeah. And not because we knew about it. We watched it and we're like, I know exactly where that is. We've driven past that. Yes. So, yeah. Um, still checking out some different books, mostly about the paranormal here in the Carolinas, since that's where we're at now. So if you have recommendations, again, reach out to us. That's going to be uh, contact at creepgeeks.com. Or you can reach out to me. That'll be omi at creepgeeks.com. You can also reach out to Greg, Greg at creepgeeks.com. Yes. Yep. And be sure to follow us, Facebook, YouTube, anywhere you can. Uh, Creep Geeks Podcast, you'll find us. Yeah. Uh, oh, and join the Facebook group. Yeah, please. join the tra- yeah join the Facebook group. <laughs> Come see some stuff. Yes, we have. And if you also want to, you can also join the Cheap Geek Facebook group. Yeah. We got like over fourteen thousand likes now. Yeah. So they kind of go hand in hand. Yeah. So one's uh, funny stuff. And, and how to do stuff. 
Yeah. That would be the cheap geek side. A lot of people contribute to that sort of thing. And creep geeks. It's about weird, wacky, wild, just strange. It's weird stuff and funny stuff. Yeah. So one is DIY and funny, and the other is creepy and funny. So, so. Feel, feel free to come check it out. Mm-hmm. You can browse all you want. And then, again, the show notes for this podcast episode will have links to everything, including how to reach out to us and details about the podcast. Yes. Production. <laughs> yes. But yeah, that's uh, really about it. So we do appreciate you taking the time to listen to us. And uh, just so you know, so far we have uh, exceeded our 10,000 downloads. Very nice. A little bit of a milestone. Thank you, guys. Um, and it's because you guys listen. So uh, any questions, comments, concerns, let us know. Uh, you can always give us a call. Leave a message if you'd like and I'll tell you that number. That number is 575-208-4025. Yeah. But other than that, that's about all we got. So, uh, any questions? Nope. All righty. <laughs> so, anyway, thanks for listening to the Creep Geeks podcast. This was episode number 104 Flying Creatures, Bah Humbug, and Fart Equals Knife. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, see you later. Take it easy. Bye bye. Bye.